I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, consider it a warning bell. The book, The Intelligent Idiot, highlights the negative impact of human actions on the environment. It predicts major changes in the world due to global warming caused primarily by the use of fossil fuels and oil drilling in the Arctic. These actions will result in the melting of polar ice caps, extinction of species, rising sea levels, and environmental damage that will affect future generations. We're delighted to have Colin Evans join us here today on Spotlight. We ask those watching to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel. Colin, thank you so much for joining us here today. Pleasure, mate. Love your book. It's an important book. Why intelligent idiot? Why did you spell intelligent that way? With did, did you notice how intelligent was spelled? Because <laughs> I, I, I spelled it with an E, didn't I? Yes, you did. Explain why in the book. Because that's what we are. We are the intelligent idiot. We are the most, we're the only animal on you, on this planet, that creates a false world to live in, like using tarmac, concrete, electric light then. And the, the more we go in, the worse we're making it. We're destroying every single thing we need to survive on this planet for profit. It's as simple as that, really. And we are the intelligent. Every other animal on this planet will find its own niche and it'll make its homes of the natural things like twigs, moss, whatever. And then that goes back into the land. But as we just build things, I raise buildings and, well, cars, you name it. You know, yeah. and we're their own worst enemy, really. And exactly. people can't, don't seem to see it for some reason. Yeah. You know? The uh, dogs know not to poop where they live. It seems exactly. like we're not quite as smart as the dogs, right? Right. <laughs> well, in the, in the book, it says, in our, in our DNA, we've got spindle cells, which are responsible for intelligence, talking, remembrance, and all this sort of thing, right? Yeah. Well, they done a study on elephants, all the primates, the great whales, and they have three times more of them spindle cells in their DNA than us. So we really did the most intelligent thing on this planet. You know, they live in their environment. They don't create the false world they live in, which we do. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying go back to mad debts and and them with slings and arrows and, you know, <laughs> and spears and things, but there's got to be a limit in it because everything we make that they're using concrete, plastic is a pain because it's just yeah. forever in it. Hemp, you can make anything you need, clothing, food, plastics. You can build houses out of it. Mm -hmm. If you build houses out of it, it's Fireproof, soundproof, insulation, everything. Henry Ford, when he built his first car, he was going to use hemp for the body panels. Right. Because it's 10 times lighter, 10 times stronger, and it's biodegradable. But then in America, the banning of hemp, growing of hemp was banned, wasn't it? So we had to use steel. I mean, hemp basically is the answer to everything we need. You can even feed yourself, it's, it's a medicine, you know? But there are so many things that we could do to improve. I and mean, we have got the intelligence to, to improve things. But we're so hell-bent on profit that nothing else matters. People don't matter no more. It's profit. Yeah, yeah? exactly. Profits over people is a uh, negative spiral. It's just going to bring us where we don't belong and where we shouldn't be. What made you decide to write a book? Well, funny enough, I, I had no intention of writing this. I was writing my life story as a, a biker living in Wales, because I've been in the bike clubs and all this. And I started writing, like, I taught myself to read and write, so it was, it was a bit ropey. And I hit, a, like, a, a stone wall, I couldn't think anymore. But it's been in my mind for years and years in the back of my mind, and I just sat down and just wrote The Intelligent Idiot. And it's four years of research in AIM. I just went, click, and away I went. Hmm. You know? Did you enjoy writing it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I love writing. Mm. You know, I love it. I got two other stories as well. I've done a children's story for kids with leukemia and cancer. It was mm. a charity book that uh, another author asked me to, to write the story for that. And I just finished my first science fiction story, which is 2020. It's like Mad Max meets Planet of the Apes. <laughs> and, oh, it's, it's, it's a good one, but it's something for everybody in there. Because all the animals have become self-aware. And they can talk to each other. So an ant in England could talk to an, an elephant in Africa. Basically, it's the intelligent idiot, but from the animal's point of view. Because they've shut us down. 
Yeah. We've got no water, no food, nothing. The insects are not pollinating our food anymore. So they've got us where they want us, really. And that's, that's the first of three books, hopefully. Well, that's well, that's wonderful that you've got the three books out there. And uh, tell me what you think is going to happen to us as a people, as a world, if we do continue polluting it and dumping on it like we are right now. I mean, the plastics alone, as you mentioned, are, you know, clogging and strangling our oceans and killing the, the sea life. Yeah, well, every everything you read out of the sea now, you're ingesting the plastic because it breaks down into little micro bits, you know? Yeah. If you carry on as you are, mate, then we ain't going to be here. I mean, the, the Neanderthal man lived on this planet longer than we have, and they are gonna, they're going to beat us where we're going. Right. You know, I've learned so much since I wrote that book. It is quite frightening, to be honest. Exactly. In some ways, the cavemen were smarter than us, huh? Oh, yeah. I won't argue with that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what about the drilling activities in the Arctic? That tends to uh, be a heavy price the world has to pay. Tell us about that. It is. Well, the Arctic ice helps keep the planet cool. Because when the sun hits the ice, it reflects a, a good 80% bit back up into space. Right? But not only that, under the ice that is melting, you have all uh, the phytoplankton and all the small, the start of the food chain. Mm. And if all that ice melts, then that will die and we'll go with it. Because we think we're the most important planet, the thing on this planet, and we ain't. We're the least needed. Because you, th we think, because we're the top of the food chain, it's our way to do what we want. But then, because if you, you mess with one, it's going to have a knock-on effect with it. Same as when... Um, in the, oh, the big thing in America where they, they got into the, the, the wolves. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the park now. And everything went to go off on it, like. And then they reintroduced the wolves, and the natural balance just come back. There's, right. there's loads of things. And um, there was a, a place, in, I think it was in Mexico, where the Amarad sharks were wiped out because of tourists fishing for them and all this sort of stuff. So then you got the cow nosed ray just went mental because he had no predator and he was destroying everything. But then they reintroduced the red sharks and everything goes back to normal. Everything's got a balance. Yeah. You know, nature's an incredible thing. Nature makes a really good friend if you respect her and a really bad enemy if you don't. And that's what we see, you know, the global warming, the storms, you know. Absolutely. And you know a lot about nature and the world because you've actually lived off the land. You lived in a cave for a year. Tell us yeah. about that. Uh, well, like I say, I'm, I'm an ex coal miner from South Wales. Mm -hmm. And when they shut the pits down, I had a few bob and that. Like, you know, and I've always been into my bikes. And a mate of mine came to see me, said, Well, do you want to go for a ride in the bikes? I goes, All right, where do you want to go? He said, Oh, have a look at Cheddar Gorge. Mm. Is that it all? We come over here, he went back. 45 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> so, you know, that's married couple of kids and five grandkids. Happy enough, but, you know. That's wonderful, wonderful. So you went from the 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 um cave to living yeah. in a tent in a field. That's right. In Luke side the farm. Yeah. I was living off the land there, thinning his rabbits out and and all this sort of stuff, look. So I imagine you learned a lot of important life lessons living off the land like that, right? Oh, God, yeah. 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 Well, my, my brother, he's dead now, bless him, Brian, he's ex-SBS. Mm -hmm. So he, he taught me a lot of things, like, which come in very handy, to be honest, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've had all sorts, mate. Hedgehogs, rabbits, badger ham. There's mm -hmm. only thing on a badger you can eat is a back leg. Amazing. And I didn't kill the badger, a lot he done that, because they are, but yeah, oh, all sorts, living of the berries and that. But yeah. it, it, I think it, it makes you appreciate what's around you more. Oh, yeah. You know, because everybody, like, you get these wealthy people, big houses and that, and to them, the world don't exist, the natural right. world. You know, it's all business, I got to earn this, I got to do that, and it's just work, work, work. We're, we're not put you to work, you know? Yes. you got to have a balance. Like, everything exactly. has got to have a balance. Exactly. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Tell me about the science fiction you, book you wrote. What's the title of it? 2020. Now, is it named 2020 because of the pandemic in 2020? No, no. The, the reason it's called 2020, 
Because when the animals and that become self-aware, and then they get better and better and better till the end, they, they think like a colony of ants. So they think 10 times quicker than us. So they are way in front of us. And it says in the book, they do it, they attack in the oil rigs, um, power station, shutting all the power down and that. And they said, I say, now it's strange it happened in 2020 because they seem to have a perfect vision of what they have to do and they are willing to do anything to achieve it. So that's where the 2020 come from. Now. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's going to be 2020 and so it begins. And then it's going to go on to the other book. The weird thing is for the third book, mm -hmm. I've already written the end, which is a strange thing, you know, but but the end is a good end. You can't argue, you can't really argue with it. Because if you write in fiction, it's got to be probable. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. everything in this book is scaringly probable. I mean, a few of my friends have read it, that I, they tell me, if it's rubbish, they'll tell me. And they're saying, you want to get that to Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. So there's no sense just bring him up, is it? You know, but it, it would make it an incredible film. Like I say, Smart Max meets Planet D. Planet he kicks over. The Queen of England, she was kicked out of, out of there. She was living out of bins on the streets and houses of parliaments are gone. People getting eaten alive by rats, all sorts, mate. Yeah. Sounds very, very interesting indeed. And Planet of the Apes, the one from 1968 with Charlton Heston, I think was the greatest science fiction movie ever made. What do you think? Yeah, yeah that's brilliant. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I, I think that's what the, the idea, well, like I say, 2020 is like the animals are bad enough. So it's basically the intelligence you get from the year view. And the more intelligence, they are more than capable of doing it in the box, sort of thing, you know? Yeah. And... Yeah, the Getsy thing, it's got a few people thinking, oof, and it's all plausible, which yeah. makes you get, oh, well, you know, that could happen. And yeah. it just pulls you in then, doesn't it? Once oh, you feel it could movie. happen, it feels real, it feels scary, it connects. So absolutely. Yeah. Do you think some of the changes we're making as a society, such as the push towards electric vehicles, are helping to keep us yeah. from becoming intelligent idiots? i tell you something about the electric cars, right? We did mind in the lithium. Yeah. And all this stuff to make one battery takes 20 odd tons of soil, it's got to be all moved. And the big lorries they're using to make one lithium battery does more pollution than one petrol car or one diesel car running for 20 years. Wow. So that research again. So, no, it's it's nonsense, mate. Yeah. It's Everybody in the world couldn't drive electric cars anyway. Where are you going to charge them? I know. You know, plus in this country, if a lithium battery goes below three degrees, they won't charge. Well, it's wow. not good in this country, is it? It'd be no good in the UK. That won't work in the US either in the Northeast. It gets pretty damn no. cold in the uh, winter. Well, that's it. You're on a, a, a freeway or something and it's snowing and you're in traffic. You've had it now. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. The way we got to go is hydrogen cars. Mm. Hydrogen's the way forward, definitely. Because the only emissions out of that is water. It's, it's amazing that a society that can produce something like this can't produce an alternative fuel that burns cleanly and is cheap to produce, right? Yeah. 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 Amazing. Hydrogen's easy enough to make. You can buy kits. You can, all you need is salt water, electrodes in it, which is simply like, and connect it to a 12-volt battery. And the bubbles that come out of that are hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah. Tesla. Well, yeah. Tesla was a... The first hydrogen vehicle was in... 1898, he was a tractor. Mm. And the guy made a hydrogen cell in it and drove perfect. Yeah. So, you know, it's not it's not modern technology at all. It's over 100 years old. Right. But the certain people repress it, isn't it? Like the big oil companies. Like these people, he was a guy in America but, but uh, converted his car to run on water. And then he had a big, some guy off to make millions and he said no. And then mm. he's, died in a restaurant. The mm. car's gone. I mean, it, it's like Tesla it could generate electric power out of nothing because it's we're surrounded by electric. He died a pauper because everything is just shut down. You know, and it's, cause it's too much money, isn't it? Yeah. You've got the big petrol companies and all this. They just buy it out. You know? 
Exactly. It's a lot about money. It's about a, a lot about profit and it's putting people behind profit. And that's always a problem. The name of the book is The Intelligent Idiot. It is written by Colin C. Evans. It is an awesome read. It'll inform you about your world. It will tell you what you need to do to save your uh, planet. It'll inform you as to what's going on right now and where the issues and the problems are. It took years of research. You can see it in the book and it is just Amazing. Colin C. Evans, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. The pleasure has been all mine. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.